Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. so that was probably for me the worst where yeah. you just oh my god it's so funny because as as black audiences as any marginalized person can attest to we've had to find ourselves in uh white stories we've had to find white characters that we identify with for so long and then now that we are centering ourselves in these stories white audiences for the first time ever are being like oh like I, like now i have to find myself even though no one in this looks like me yeah. you know i've like i really identify with this protagonist and um but that's where empathy comes from you know that's where that's where yeah. actual movement comes from and it's you know with this piece i think it's it's actually a terrifically universal piece because it's it's really just it's the story of a, a guy who has trouble speaking up for himself who learns how to speak up for himself you know and i think that independent of the sort of racialized um, sort of generation of that for 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 myself and for the, the character that the justice plays I, I think that's something a lot of people from a lot of different backgrounds can connect with but yeah but i think sometimes people look at a, a piece that's that's labeled with race or has race associated with it and um when you know white people i mean have and, and worry whether or not they'll be able to connect to it but i think all all, all stories are universal mm -hmm. the more specific they are the more universal they are boy oh boy oh boy oh boy oh boy does nothing that i love more than a good old classic Get woke, go broke story. And that's what we have to talk about here today when it comes to the Holly Weird movie, The American Society of Magical Negroes, okay, which is a movie that is supposed to be about the secret world of, I guess, black people that protect black people from harm, harm from white people. And the way to protect them from harm from white people is to make white people comfortable now the trailer for this movie i'm pretty sure a lot of you guys remember it went viral for the wrong reasons even though nobody really watched it i think more people watch reactions to the trailer than the actual trailer itself because the trailer only got 233 uh thousand uh views okay um basically played up on this idea of white tears and in the trailer they call white people the most dangerous animal on the planet okay so they describe white people as animals now this is supposed to be satirical okay it's supposed to be a comedy movie but a lot of people uh rightfully so uh didn't really like that right they didn't like how they overtly played up on these racist tropes against white people and i think the main reason why is because we know that if this was done in reverse even in the name of satire it would not be acceptable right could you imagine a movie that comes out in the name of comedy talking about how there's a society of whites that are uh there to protect white people from black folks okay who you know if you make them uncomfortable uh they can be the most dangerous animal on the planet right i mean there would be outrage okay that movie would not be allowed in theaters okay so my problem is not necessarily with the movie itself it is the fact that we have a double standard uh, where a movie like this is allowed, even though it is, you know, satire, comedy, whatever. But we all know that if another movie was made that had the opposite premise here, racially, it would never be allowed, right? Never be allowed, okay? So again, this woke movie, uh, at least from the beginning, okay, the trailer, um, it was an absolute epic disaster um, as they have 29 dislikes. I mean, ratioed into oblivion okay and you look at the comment section here uh a lot of people are basically trashing the movie uh this person said this is fantastically horrible damn studios are just throwing money at crap nowadays we was wizards and sheet <laughs> we was kanks movie has racism bobs won't waste my time with this bs woke racist garbage I went to see this movie yesterday. This has got to be one of the worst movies I've ever seen. I walked out about 45 minutes into the movie. I mean, horrible. I like to see the reverse of this movie. Yeah, exactly. You won't see the reverse, right? The reverse wouldn't be allowed. The reverse would be smeared as racist, okay? Even if it's satirical, even if it's comedy, you're not allowed to do that, right? Which, again, is my main problem. Um, you know, trash. What a racist piece of garbage. Everyone involved with this movie should be embarrassed and ashamed of themselves. Holly Weird, stop trying to divide us. We are all American and will stand together. There's no reason for a black person to be afraid of a white person and vice versa. 
This is a truly racist movie, just in a different way compared to our history. Racism is racism. This movie will die if we uh, pay no attention to it, just like race and racism. We are all one race, the human race. Okay, so uh, there is some truth to what this person said in regards to if you stop talking about racism or if you stop paying attention to movies like this, then um, they will die, right? They will go away. Um, because this movie bombed at the box office. But before we talk about the uh, epically disastrous numbers, um, let's talk about this whole magical Negro trope, okay? Uh, because, again, that's what this movie is centered around, okay? And I think that that's an interesting thing to explore uh, so people can get a better understanding of exactly what the plot of this movie was. In an interview with BT, uh, Libby, I believe that's the director, provided more details about his motivation to make a film like the American Society of Magical Negroes, revealing that he was not a fan of these particular type of stories. Quote, it all sort of starts with the magical Negro trope, the director prefaced. I'm sure you're familiar with it, but just to define it on my own terms, I think of the magical Negro as a kind of stock black character a black uh, best friend character who is only uh, focused on helping the white hero. He went on, they don't really have an inner life and they don't have their own things going on. They're just relentlessly focused on helping this white character grow in most cases. And I always thought that was so funny. For whatever reason, the idea that there is a white writer whose pictures, the only thing we do in the morning is getting up and trying to help them. I found it so absurd and incorrect and funny that I wanted to blow it out and uh, criticize it, but also use it as a way to talk about other stuff. Let me further explain what it's like to grow up as a black person in this culture and some of the wild and uh, fantastical things we have to do to survive. To me, that's the origin story of the film. Okay, so again, you know, what I find to be so you know, fascinating about that is you're talking about what do black people have to do to survive? Well, in modern day, uh, it's not the white man that black people need to worry about. Now, again, I could be missing the whole point of the movie and what they're actually really trying to say, but I really don't think I am. Okay. <laughs> Just based off of the trailer and what this director is saying, um, when you talk about what black people have to do to survive, you're not dealing with white folks. Okay. What you're dealing with is black people, right? A, a black person that has to get up every single day and think about how he's going to survive. Uh, is probably living in a neighborhood full of black folks, okay? Because the people that are robbing, stealing, killing, uh, taking away from black people the most are black people, okay? So when you try to play up this idea that black people or the experience of a black person is having to survive around white people, that's ridiculous, right? I mean, it truly is a ridiculous thing. Now, again, you know, I'm not saying I have a problem with the movie being made. Honestly, I just have a problem with the fact that if the roles were reversed racially in a movie was made like this, it would never be acceptable. That's the only thing I really have a problem with, okay? Because, hey, entertainment is entertainment, and I believe in free speech. Uh, Libby will go on to reveal that he's not concerned about audiences not understanding the message he's trying to convey with the American Society of Magical Negroes, especially for a film with such a title. Quote, not particularly because it's one of those things that, like, even if you don't know the term, you know, told BET, uh, it's Spike Lee's term. He's the one who coined it. You know, that black character that's just there to be nebulously black in the background. Yeah. So anyways, uh, he should have been concerned about uh, what audiences would interpret in regards to that title, uh, because this movie was an absolute disaster right a disaster at the box office right a financial disaster as it barely manages to make 1 million on opening weekend now again when you look at the rotten tomato reviews okay from opening weekend as you can see the all audience score uh it's a major flop right 26 percent from the audience uh 31 percent from top critics i mean even the woke revolutionaries that they were trying to appeal to the critics because we all know that they're woke right even they was like ah this movie sucks <laughs> right this movie sucks okay um uh, it is getting absolutely uh trashed in the reviews all around um again it's 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 not good man it's not good <laughs> okay um you know let's read some of them real quick not funny not clever not entertaining not edgy nothing 
uh, not much here, but well filmed and acted. Too bad the script is so weak. Huge piece of garbage. It is like two movies and one that together equals a really bad movie. It could have been funny, but alas, it was not. Uh, let's read a positive one. Uh, I liked the movie. I thought it was cute, whimsical, but also gave some important, valuable lessons. This movie is an embarrassment to cinema. Yeah, so back to the finances, so you guys can understand how much of a flop this movie actually was. Uh, the American Society of Magical Negroes, a self-described comedy produced by Focus Features and directed by Kobe Libby, is a massive financial disaster that will likely fail to break even. Again, you know, one million uh, for a modern day movie, okay, you open it over a thousand uh, theaters. Again, that's terrible. Okay, that's absolutely terrible. Okay, it's embarrassing. And I mean, hey, at the end of the day, who would want to sign up and go see something like this? Turns out when you alienate um, a vast majority of America, that's not a good business model, right? And this is why I try to tell a lot of these people that always want to come out here and make a lot of these overtly pro-black stuff. It's like, yo, you're alienating your business, okay? You're making it a lot harder for your business to be successful because it does not have mass appeal. And that's why I try to tell a lot of these people when, you know, when you're putting a business out there, uh, don't put it out there as black first, right? That's probably the worst thing that you could do, okay? A business that I would stay away from is a business that tries to market itself overtly based off race because you're automatically limiting your audience from the get-go. Now, there are some products that can work like that. Like, for example, maybe some type of hair care product where it makes sense, it makes sense to maybe, you know, have it marketed towards a certain race or people with a certain type of hair. I get that. That makes sense. But when it comes to other things, other ventures, it's probably not a good idea to do, right? It's probably a terrible idea to do that, okay? And, um, you know, again, I'm not surprised that a movie like this performed uh, so poorly considering how they basically told more than half of the country, don't watch this, right? You're probably going to be offended by watching this movie. Uh, as per information collected by the numbers, the Justice Smith-led film, uh, was barely able to pass the 1 million mark, making a total of 1,300,000 uh, on opening weekend, debuting on 1,147 theaters across the United States. While the film's production budget is being kept under wraps, those numbers are still abysmal. Yeah, they're never going to come out with that, right? They're never going to tell you how much it costs to make it <laughs> because they'll tell you how much money they lost, right? So they're going to keep that under wraps. To better illustrate, the American Society of Magical Negroes grossed a mere 524000 on Friday, a measly 469000 on Saturday, and an even more pathetic 310000 on Sunday, seeing a 34% drop from opening day. Yeah, so it's over for this movie, right? Uh, this is the best that it's going to perform on opening weekend. Um, it's done, right? It's done. Uh, the American Society of Magical Negroes had to settle for uh, the box office charts ninth place and word of mouth isn't doing the film any favors either. Yeah, I can imagine. Right. I can imagine. I don't think that people want to uh, watch a movie uh, that, you know, describes white people as the most dangerous animals in the world. Again, half of the country, you've already said, don't watch this movie. Right. We don't want you watching this. OK, so with that being said, um, yeah, this movie is an absolute disaster. Um, and it deserved the flopping that it got, right? It deserved the bloodbath that happened to it at the uh, movie theaters, and I'm not surprised at all. You cannot build a successful business. You cannot have a successful entertainment platform or a successful movie when you alienate more than half of the country. So uh, another woke disaster, and uh, let this be a lesson to anybody that's trying to get into the race hustling game, right? Uh, you get woke, you go broke. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black and sort of perspective. Peace.